Hey folks, it is Tip Tuesday. I got Mitch here, sales engineer at IndieSoft. Also have Will with me this week. Um, Will's one of our senior developers. It, uh, again, it's Tip Tuesday, so we're going to talk about today um, uh, equipment attributes. We, we've heard that a lot. We see it a lot of places. We're actually going to see that in three different references or areas in the software, which we're going to go over today. Um, but before we jump in, um, first just want to say I hope you all had a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. I hope it was fun, it was safe, and um, just on behalf of all of the IndieSoft team, we just want to give a special thank you to all of our veterans and uh, families of our servicemen and women. So let's jump right in to attributes. Okay, so what attributes are is there's, there's two types, correct Will? There's, so we've got attributes that are at the equipment level, and these are just what we call our attribute fields. So I want to sh kind of show you these really quickly here. What those are is when I look at this particular item, this is just a gauge block set, and you're going to see I've got my status fields and then I've got my attributes. So over here when I select gauge blocks, or I've, pr I've already have this selected in my case, I've got a field here for blocks per set, material, shape, range. Well, those are fantastic fields, but they're really specific only to gauge blocks. So we give you the ability to create extent or bonus fields just for a certain type of equipment. That's what an attribute is in our world. So inside of here, um, just as a reference, and I know that I'm going to toggle this item away, but let's say I change this set of attribute type to, let's just say in my case, I switch over to a um, thread plug. Well, when I do that, um, what that's going to do is that's going to take away my field for blocks per set. It took away my field for what type of material it was. Right? What that did is that presented a new set of fields. Well, these particular fields, direction, diameter, pitch, those don't even apply to a gauge block set. Those are applicable to a thread plug. So we allow you to create attribute sets or types per the type of equipment that you're putting in the system. So I'm going to go back to my gauge block set here just by modifying this. Um, and we do give you a warning. This is going to give you a, a pop-up there that says, hey, you're about to modify your fields visible. You can disable that feature if you need to. But inside of here, I've got my gauge blocks. Again, you're going to see here I've got uh, those four different bonus fields. The way that we set those up is that's something that we do under our add edit menu. Inside of here, if I go to my attributes, you're going to see my attribute types. So that's the first thing that we always have to do is create the attribute types. Now in here, I've got a lot of mine set up already, um, but if I open up my gauge block attribute type, when I do this, the first thing we're going to see is we give it a name. So I've got my attribute type. You can actually give it a description if you have several of these that are named kind of close together. And you can even make these visible in Equipment Finder and your other searches a little bit easier with a few options here. But the thing that we want to point out is how do we get those additional fields visible? And that's what you're going to see right here under the secondary step or the step two here, where when you create a set of attributes, we like to have up to eight text attributes, eight numeric attributes. You can also declare a unit of measure and a resolution for those numeric fields. Whenever you check a field, like in my case for my gauge block set, I've turned on uh, these four, first four text attributes. So over here on the right, I've given those alias names. Because on the equipment screen or an equipment finder, I certainly don't want text attribute one, two, or three showing up. That, that really wouldn't help much. So inside of here, I've given these field names. I've turned on the fields and given them field aliases. There is a third step, which is going to be what's called our extended attributes tab. Will's going to get into that in just a moment. So you'll just hang tight on that one. But I want to show you a secondary set, which is my thread plug. If I open up my thread plug, you're going to see again, I've got a name for my attribute type. And then now I'm actually using a text attribute. Um, I'm also using a numeric attribute, one and two, and then even my unit of measure field. So in my case, when I declare my diameter or my pitch, those are numeric values, right? And, and you may want a numeric value because you may want that to tie into like a tolerance or a formula later on in the system with the test points, okay? So inside of here with the gauge attributes, we're just using these extended bonus fields that are available to you and those are going to then show up on your equipment view, your searches, and available throughout the system. Um, so to give you a, a, qu a quick recap again, I've got gauge blocks. Um, uh, that's my gauge block attribute type. There's my four different fields that are available. And then if I go back and I were to take a look at, again, let's just say thread plug as an example. When I choose thread plug, you're going to see that, oh, and I actually did not choose that. I hit the X key instead of the check mark there. So now, when I go over here to thread plug, it now presents those four additional field types. Um, so again, the, the, the concept of attributes is we want particular fields to be visible to you 
based off of the specific type of gauge that you're looking at. And in my case, you know, here's my gauge block set and there's those four fields. So the secondary thing that we want to show you is our concept called extended attributes. Now extended attributes can be one of three different things and I'm going to let Will dive into what those are. So the extended attributes, these are the things showing up in your attributes tab down here. So for example, here we have gauge block replacement cost, management notes, internal overhead cost. If I change the gauge blocks to thread plug, you'll notice the gauge block replacement cost disappears. The reason for that, if we go into our attributes, and pull up the gauge blocks is our step three. This is where we define we have something called a gauge block replacement cost. It's numeric, two decimals of resolution, and we've got all kinds of options for hiding and showing it based on additional criteria. So what this does is this allows you to start defining all kinds of additional fields for gauge blocks because 8 numeric wasn't enough, 8 text wasn't enough, we just need tons and tons and tons of information. And maybe we'll make it a memo, maybe we'll make it a date, who knows. But as we do that, this can, will add new items for anything that's marked as a gauge block. So now I've got my gauge block sizes, and I can edit that as whatever I need to put in there. However, sometimes your system is going to require additional information for everybody in a particular customer. So for example, with ABC Company, maybe I'm going to need some additional information because they have special instructions. So if I go to ABC Company, I can go to their extended attributes and add an additional field. Maybe it's text, maybe it's memo. So it looks like it's the exact same Exact options. same interface, exact same options. Okay. The catch is now this special instructions field is going to show for every single gauge in ABC Company, not just the gauge blocks. Got it. For a lot of our commercial Cal Labs, they'll have workflow requirements where they need to collect data for every single gauge in the system. If you've got hundreds of customers, trying to do special instructions for each customer gets a little tedious, so that's where we'll go to our preferences and system wide. We can tab over to the right. We've got extended attributes again. And you'll notice we've got this internal overhead cost, management notes, and it's the same interface. We've still got memos, text, numeric, all kinds of wonderful stuff. But these exist on every single gauge in the system, no matter what. So this allows you to quickly make sure you've got extra information everywhere. So same interface, regardless of where you're adding the extended attribute. Exactly. Which is perfect, right? It makes it easy, easier to use and learn. But the catch is you got to know is when you go to add these extended fields, you got to always ask yourself, or are you adding this for one company in the database, for all equipment in the database, which would be system-wide, or is it only for a certain type of equipment, which would be one of those gauge-specific extended attributes? But we wanted to make it easy so the interface is the same. It's just a matter of where is this field actually going to go. Um, so I think that kind of wraps up the attribute discussion and the extended attributes. Um, there is some more, some more knowledge or information on this, and we're going to get into that in the upcoming weeks, where we also have the same concept called extended event attributes, which is where you can make an unlimited number of extended event fields available during your event system. Um, and then you can even have those tie and link to an equipment level attribute. So there's going to be more to come on attributes in the future, but for today uh, we just want to get into the, the gauge specific attributes, which we'll, if we'll navigate over to those. And um, again, those are the 
on the equipment view, they're going to be right over here on the right hand side, just like I've got with the gauge block set. Um, and then the extended attributes, those are the ones that show up down at the bottom. And again, those can be per equipment type, for a only all equipment for a specific company, or they can be for all equipment in the entire database. So you have three different options when it comes to your attributes and extended attributes. Um, but we hope this was knowledgeable, or if you have, or we hope this was helpful, I should say. If there's any additional questions, we always encourage you to call, call myself, call Will, call our support team. Um, but please let us know, and we will be happy to assist. I thank you for your time, and thank you for tuning in on Tip Tuesday. See y'all. Bye.